Hey people of YouTube, today we're covering the complete installation of the 52 inch Zondra Smart Ceiling Fan by Hampton Bay. If you found this video, you might be stuck in your own installation and you're looking for some help, we're here to do just that. We've already unpacked the fan, we're going to go over all the parts and install this thing step by step all the way to turning it on and everything in between. If you want to, you can use the links down below to fast forward to any point in the installation process and that way you don't have to watch the whole video. But if after watching the video you found it helpful, please click like and subscribe and that will help other people find it as well. So let's talk about the Zondra ceiling fan for a second. This is a smart fan and it uses Hubspace technology. You download the free Hubspace app and get it all set up and then you can integrate with Google Assistant or Alexa devices and that gives you a variety of control options. You can control the fan using the Hubspace app, using the included remote control, or using voice control once integrated with Google Assistant and Alexa devices. This fan features a six-speed reversible DC motor for year-round comfort and savings, and it also has some great quick-fit installation features like a slide-on mounting bracket, blade arms with captive screws, quick-fit blades, the twist and lock light kit, and the remote receiver even has two wire harness plugs to make attaching to the fan quick and simple, and all these features are going to make for an easy installation. Just a couple of notes before we get started. You want to make sure that the electricity is turned off at the breaker box and at the wall switch. This is an easy project, but if you don't feel comfortable working around electricity, please consult with a licensed electrician. Another note is if you're hanging this fan where there is just a light fixture on your ceiling, you need to make sure that the outlet box is clearly marked acceptable for fan support. If not, you'll need to replace that before beginning. Last but not least, included with the remote control, you'll find this quick start card. This has the QR code that you'll need when setting up the Hubspace app. Now if this card is missing, that QR code is also located on the receiver and in the battery compartment of the remote control. So as you can see here, we've already unpacked the fan and we've opened up the manual to the parts page. We're just going to go over all the parts before beginning and that way we don't get stuck along the way. So first up, you'll have the slide on mounting bracket that comes pre-installed inside the canopy with a decorative ring on the bottom and we'll show you in the first step how to remove that to get started. You have five reversible blades, just pick the finish that's right for you. You have five blade arms with the captive screws for easy installation, the ball and down rod assembly, the decorative motor collar cover, the twist and lock LED light kit, the fan motor, and you have the remote and receiver. Now as mentioned, the receiver has these quick connect wire harness plugs to make connecting to the fan quick and simple. And the remote has a wall cradle for convenient storage when it's not in use. The exciting thing about this wall cradle is it's compatible with standard toggle switches or it's compatible with Decora style switches. And this wall cradle will install right over the switch. So it still allows access to the switch while not taking up any extra space on your wall. Now the batteries are also included for your convenience. Now you also have two bits of extension wiring if you're installing this with an extension down run. And you'll have the hardware pack. The hardware pack has the hanger and locking pin, the plastic wire nuts, and an extra blade bracket screw just in case you need it. So we have all the parts here, just some tools we're going to need for this easy project. You need a flathead screwdriver, you need a Phillips head screwdriver, we like to have a long one and a short one on hand. You may need some wire cutters and strippers. We like to have a line voltage tester just to make sure the wires aren't live before beginning. You'll need some electrical tape, and of course a ladder. So we have everything here, we're ready to begin. Let's do this. The mounting bracket comes pre-assembled inside the canopy with a decorative ring on the bottom. To remove the mounting bracket, first twist the decorative ring off to expose the screws at the bottom of the canopy. Note the alignment post in the base of the canopy. You'll need a Phillips head screwdriver to loosen but not remove the two screws at the base of the canopy. Loosen the screws enough to allow the alignment post to clear the hole and then twist the mounting bracket to remove it from the canopy. This fan features a slide on mounting bracket to make installation easy. The mounting bracket has two slots that will align with the two screws in the outlet box. To install the mounting bracket, just align the slots of the mounting bracket with the two screws in the outlet box and slide the mounting bracket into place. To install the mounting bracket, first loosen but do not remove the two screws in the outlet box. 
Next, feed the house supply lines through the mounting bracket and align the slots of the mounting bracket with the screws that were loosened in the outlet box. Then slide the mounting bracket into place. Then, use a Phillips head screwdriver to completely tighten both of the outlet box screws and secure the mounting bracket. Make sure that both screws are completely tightened. Before routing the wires and attaching the down rod, you'll need to use a flathead screwdriver to loosen but not remove the set screw on the motor collar. Next, gently pull the green ground cable from inside the ball and down rod assembly. Place the down rod through the canopy so that the largest opening is facing towards the ball. Next, place the decorative ring onto the down rod, making sure that the black side with the notches is facing towards the canopy. The last piece is the decorative motor collar cover. Place that onto the down rod so that the largest opening is facing towards the threaded end of the down rod. Then route the wires through the down rod so that the end exits through the ball side and gently pull the wires through until the down rod meets the motor collar. Note the holes in the end of the down rod and the holes in the motor collar. When attaching the down rod, you'll screw the down rod into the motor collar until the holes on the end of the down rod align with the holes in the motor collar. Once those holes are aligned, use the hanger pin from the hardware pack and insert that pin through the holes on the motor collar until it exits the opposite side. Secure the hanger pin by inserting the locking pin through the end of the hanger pin. Once that pin is set, use a flathead screwdriver to completely tighten the set screw on the motor collar. Once the set screw is tightened, slide the motor collar cover and the canopy down the down rod until it meets the motor housing. Now the fan is ready to be hung. Before using the remote, you'll need to insert the batteries that were included. Slide the battery compartment cover off the back of the remote and then insert the batteries according to the diagram inside the battery compartment. Once the batteries are inserted, replace the battery cover by sliding it onto the back of the remote. Before hanging the fan, it's important to note the slot in the ball that will engage the tab in the mounting bracket. When hanging, you'll insert the ball into the mounting bracket and then rotate the fan assembly until you feel the slot engage the tab. This is just a close-up demonstration. To hang the fan, lift the assembly up to the ceiling, noting the location of the tab in the slot. Slide the ball into the mounting bracket and then rotate the assembly until you feel that slot engage the tab in the mounting bracket. The fan will drop slightly when properly seated. When installing the receiver, you'll notice one side has two plugs those will connect to the fan wiring. The other side of the receiver has three wires that will connect to the house wiring. Make sure the flat side of the receiver is facing towards the ceiling, and then insert the receiver antenna end first through the mounting bracket so that it rests on top of the ball and down rod. Begin making the wire connections by connecting the small wire plug from the receiver to the small wire plug from the fan. Once that connection is made, move that wire out of the way, and then connect the large wire plug from the receiver to the large wire plug from the fan. The plugs will snap together when properly connected. Next, take the green wires from the ball and down rod assembly, mounting bracket, and receiver and twist those three wires together. Once those wires are connected, connect those wires with the bare copper house wire. This is the ground connection. Secure the connection using a plastic wire nut and a piece of electrical tape. Next, take the white wire from the receiver and twist that wire together with the white wire from the house supply lines. These are the neutral connections. Twist those two wires together and finish the connection using an included plastic wire nut and a piece of electrical tape.
Finish the wiring by taking the black wire from the receiver and connecting that wire to the black wire from the house supply lines. This is the power connection. Twist those two wires together and secure the connection using an included plastic wire nut and a piece of electrical tape. Once all the wire connections have been made, gently tuck the wires around the mounting bracket and into the outlet box to make room for the canopy to attach. The canopy attaches to the mounting bracket using two keyhole slots on either side of the canopy that will align with the two screws at the base of the mounting bracket. Align those holes with the screws in the mounting bracket and push the canopy up so the screws come through the keyhole slots and then twist to hold the canopy in place. Use a Phillips head screwdriver to tighten those screws and secure the canopy. You can tilt the fan to make extra room for the screwdriver to access the screws. Make sure both screws are completely tight. The decorative ring attaches to the canopy using two slots in the ring that will align with the two screws at the base of the canopy. Slide the decorative ring up, aligning the slots with the screws, and then twist to lock it in place. The blade brackets attach to the fan using the pre-installed captive screws in the blade bracket. These screws will align with the two screw holes on the bottom of the motor. Place the blade bracket in position, aligning the screws with the holes, and then use a Phillips head screwdriver to completely tighten the blade bracket. Repeat this process for the four remaining blades. Make sure all of the blade bracket screws are completely tightened before proceeding. This fan features quick install blades. There are three keyhole slots on the blades that will align with the three posts on the blade arms. When installing the blades, you'll align the keyhole slots with the posts and then press down and pull away from the fan to lock the blade in place. There's a spring clip mechanism that will snap in place when properly installed. This is just a demonstration. If you ever need to remove the blade, press down on the spring clip mechanism and push the blade towards the fan to remove. The blades are reversible, so choose the finish that you'd like and make sure that finish is facing towards the floor. Then align the keyhole slots of the blades with the post on the blade arms, press down and pull away from the fan to lock the blade in place. Repeat this process for the four remaining blades. The light kit attaches to the fan using a twist and lock process. There are three posts in the light kit that will align with the three slots on the base of the fan. Connect the light kit to the fan by inserting the light kit plug into the plug from the fan. Next, gently tuck the wires in, align the posts of the light kit with the slots on the fan, then push up and twist to lock the light kit in place. To install the wall cradle over a Decora style switch, Start by removing the screws from the existing faceplate of the switch. Next, place the wall cradle over the switch and align the screw holes of the wall cradle with the screw holes in the faceplate. Use the flat-ended Phillips screws to secure the wall cradle to the faceplate of the switch. Once the wall cradle is installed, you will still be able to access the switch. Slide the remote into the wall cradle for convenient storage when the remote is not in use. To install the wall cradle over a standard toggle switch, begin by removing the screws from the existing faceplate. Next, place the toggle spacer of the wall cradle over the switch and align the screws of the wall cradle with the holes in the faceplate. Use the flat-ended Phillips screws to secure the wall cradle spacer to the faceplate. Next, place the wall cradle onto the toggle spacer and secure using two tapered screws. Once the wall cradle is installed, you'll still be able to access the switch. Slide the remote into the wall cradle for convenient storage when the remote is not in use. The fan is controlled by a feature-rich remote control. Press the power button to turn the fan and light on or off. Press the light power button to turn just the light on or off. Press the increase brightness button to increase the light's brightness. Press the Decrease Brightness button to dim the light.
Press the color temperature button to cycle through the light's six different color temperature options. Press one of the timer buttons to select either the two, four, or eight hour timer. Press and hold the winter button for three seconds to change the fan's direction to produce an upward airflow. This will pull warm air from the ceiling during the colder months. Press and hold the summer button for three seconds to set the fan's direction to produce a downward airflow. This will create a cooling effect during the warmer months. Please note that the fan must be on and running before pressing the winter or summer buttons. Once pressed, the fan will slow to a stop and then restart in the opposite direction. Press the fan power button to turn just the fan on or off. Press the speed increase button to increase the fan speed. Press the speed decrease button to decrease the fan speed. Press the comfort breeze button to randomly alternate the fan speed, which creates an organic breeze effect. Press the button again to exit the comfort breeze mode. You can also press any of the fan speed buttons to exit comfort breeze mode. The speed indicator LED lights will illuminate to show the fan speed. The lights will all illuminate when the other buttons are pushed to confirm the signal is being sent. Download the free Hubspace app from the Apple App Store or Google Play Store and follow the instructions in the app to register an account. Place the Hubspace card with the QR code that came with the remote on a flat surface. This will bring up the option to add a device. Tap the Next button and then enter your home network's credentials to connect your fan to your Wi-Fi network. You'll receive the message in the app once the fan is connected. Select your fan from the app's home screen to bring up the control module. From here you can adjust the fan speed, the light color temperature, and the light brightness settings. Using the buttons at the bottom of the screen, you can set a schedule, a timer, or change the settings of your fan, such as your fan name and location. Press the orange Hubspace button at the bottom of the screen to easily integrate your fan with the voice assistant of your choosing. Then simply follow the on-screen prompts to complete the setup. Once setup is complete, use the voice commands listed in your manual to control the fan. The remote has been paired with the fan at the factory. If you need to pair the remote, start with the power off at the breaker box or wall switch, then turn power back on, and within 30 seconds, press and release the learn button in the battery compartment of the remote. Once the remote is paired, the blades will begin to spin. To use a second remote with the fan, repeat this process, but press and hold the learn button on the second remote for 10 seconds. When starting the fan, you may notice that the fan moves back and forth or seems to stutter before starting up. This is completely normal for a DC motor ceiling fan. This is just the magnetic poles in the DC motor aligning and starting the fan up. Congratulations! The ceiling fan installation is now complete. Time to sit back, relax with a nice tall beverage, and enjoy your new ceiling fan. As always, thanks for watching, and if you found this video helpful, please click like and subscribe down below, and that'll help other people find it as well. And as we always say around here, keep it breezy!